What's up guys, Justin here with TheSketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So today we're going to use the extension Fredo Scale to create a twisted plywood lamp. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so this is something I found on YouTube. I was watching videos and um, there was a video from a channel called Olaris. So they created a plywood lamp using twisted plywood pieces. So I wanted to see if I could come in here and recreate that um, using SketchUp. So first thing we're going to do, you can delete out the default default model, but the first thing you're going to do is, well actually the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you have Fredo Scale downloaded. You can download that from the Sketchication Warehouse. I'll link to that in the notes below. Um, or you can just go to the Sketchication Warehouse and search for Fredo Scale. Um, but so what we're going to do first is we're going to draw our plywood strips. And so what we're going to do with that is we're going to draw, we're going to draw a strip using the rectangle tool that's 12 inches long and one inch wide. So in this case, we're gonna type in one comma 12 with the rectangle tool active, just like this. And so you can see that came in here and that drew a rectangle that's one inch wide, 12 inches long. Then you can use the push pull tool to extrude this. And in this case, I'm gonna extrude it to about an eighth of an inch thick, just like this. So you can see how now I've got this piece in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna select all of it, just like this. And then with Fredo scale, so you're gonna come in here and you're gonna activate this, this tool for twisting that looks like the little box with the blue and green colors in there. So you're gonna click on that and what that's gonna do is that's gonna give you a couple different little boxes just like this. We're gonna click on the one on the end and we're gonna click on it. You're gonna move your mouse out to zero degrees and click once. Then you're gonna move your mouse until this says 180 degrees and you're gonna click again. And you can see how what that does is that comes in here and that twists your box 180 degrees so you get a full spin on this object just like this. So now we've got kind of our basic twisted plywood shape. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to select that, we're going to right click on it, we're going to make it a component. So in this case we'll just call this plywood strip, just like this. And so now you've got your plywood strip in here, now we're gonna make some copies of it. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this so that it's an inch and a half from where I started. So I'm gonna activate the move tool by tapping the M key, and then I'm gonna click once on this corner, and you see how if I click and move this, it just moves my object, but if I tap the control key, then it'll make a copy of that object. So then you wanna move your mouse until the little box in the lower right-hand corner says an inch and a half, and click once. And then without clicking on anything else, you're gonna type in times 10 and hit the enter key. What that's gonna do is that's gonna create 10 copies in here, each one spaced an inch and a half from this starting point to this starting point, or a better way to say it is spaced a half inch apart just like this. So you've got your 10 copies in here just like this. Now what you wanna do is you're gonna come in here with the rectangle tool and you're gonna create another face. So in this case, we're gonna come in here, we're gonna activate the rectangle tool, and then we're gonna create an object that's basically as long as all of these, as long as all of these strips, and we're gonna make it one inch tall. So just kinda of move your mouse until it gives you a one inch tall rectangle, and then click once. And then you're gonna extrude that using the push-pull tool. So tap the P key and click on this face, and then you can just move your mouse onto this face right here um, to give you the right thickness. Or you can type in an eighth of an inch. So what we're going to do now is we're going to group that. So one other thing we're going to do, because what we're going to do is we're going to come in here with the radial bend option of Fredo scale, and we're going to bend this in a circle. But if we were to do that right now, you'd have a little bit of an issue because there wouldn't be, it wouldn't line up properly. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're just going to push pull this object another half inch. So just push pull this. 0.5 inches just like this because what we're going to do is we're going to bend this in a circle and you want these ends to match up and so if you don't add another half inch on this end right here then your spacing will be screwed up and I'll show you what I'm talking about but for right now what we're going to do is we're just going to select this we're going to right click on it we're going to make it a component and we'll just call this base slash top piece and hit the enter key and then now you're going to use the move tool to create a copy of that object and put it right up here. 
So now you've got a piece down here on the bottom and a piece down here on the top, just like this. And then what we can do is we can come in here and we can group this whole thing, just like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stand it up using the rotate tool. So I just tap the Q key and then uh, I tap the right mouse button to lock this to the red axis. And then I'm just gonna click here and I'm gonna stand my object up. And I'm gonna go ahead and move it onto the origin right here. You don't have to do that, that's just kind of a preference thing. So we'll go ahead and stand this up just like this. So now what we've got is we've got our object right here and you can see as I kind of rotate around this, you can see the objects twist along here. Well now what we wanna do is we wanna come in here and we wanna bend this along an arc. So we're gonna use this last option in Fredo scale called radial bending. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on the radial bend tool you're gonna tap the up key to lock it to the blue axis. And then you're gonna come in here and you're gonna click on this first point. And then it's gonna ask you for a reference direction and also a target point. So just click once to set your reference direction, click again to set your target point on this end point right here. And then you can see how now if you move your mouse, it gives you kind of a preview of this bending. So what you wanna do is you wanna type in, once you have this active, you wanna type in 180 and hit the inner key just like this. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna bend this in a circle, just like this. So you can see how this is now bending along a 180 degree circle. And sometimes what this will do is this will come in here and this may break your geometry a little bit. So you may have to come back in here and just kinda trace over some of these objects to uh, fill the faces back in. Ooh, but you do need to make sure you're actually inside each one of these groups in order for that to work. But, so you can just come in here, you can just kind of fill a face in just like that, and then you can use the erase tool in hide mode. So just hold the shift key to hide this extra geometry in here, it's like that. So you can activate the erase tool, hold the shift key, and click and drag over these this geometry in order to hide it. So if you don't want those pieces showing up in there just like that. And there's a few other places where you have that. So you can come in here and you can mess with that if you want to. But for right now, what we're going to do is we've got this group that's kind of bent 180 degrees. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make that a component. So just right click on it and click make component. And then I'm just going to call this um, object half and hit the enter key. So now this is a component. So now when I make a copy of it just like this, and I start editing it, um, if I change one side, the other side will change with it. So that'll save me some time. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna flip this using the scale tool. So I'm just gonna activate the scale tool by tapping the S key. I'm gonna click on this little red box right here and I'm gonna move this until down in the lower right hand corner it says negative one. So that's basically flip my object. And then I'm gonna move this back. So I'm gonna take this corner, I'm gonna line it up with this corner just like this. And so what you're going to notice is this is what I talked about a little earlier is your spacing screwed up right now because what you've got is you've got two pieces that go all the way to the end here. Well, if you remember what we did is on the other side, we had this little extra spacing piece just like this. Well, this is why. So all you're going to do now is you're going to hold the con you're going to activate the scale tool. You're going to hold the control key down and then you're going to click and you're going to move this object until it's flipped or it's scaled to negative one, just like this. And you may have to move your corner over just a little bit so that it lines up. But you can see how now that I flipped it, it's got the same spacing on both sides. So if I move over here, it's got a half inch space right here. If I move on this side, it's got a half inch space right here. So now this is kind of a uniform shape, just like this. And so now you've got a couple different options um, when you're coming in here and you're working with this. Um, the first thing you could do is you could just kind of leave it the way that it is and uh, just call it good. That's definitely an option. The other thing you could do is you could come in here, you could make this a group, and then you could use the twist tool again. So if I select this, I activate the twist tool, and then I click on this bottom point. What I can do is I can move my mouse to zero degrees. I can click once, and then I can type in a number like 45 degrees and hit the enter key. And what that'll do is that'll come in here and that'll twist this again so that it's got kind of a spiraling look to it. So instead of having those objects straight up and down, what it's gonna do is it's gonna spiral.
So you can see how now I've got this spiraling shape in here just like this. So again, that might create some places where you need to come in here and you need to clean this up a little bit. Um, so you can just come in here and do that kind of the same way. Just kind of draw along these faces inside the object. And then you can hide the leftover geometry. And a lot of the time you just have to draw over these once or twice and it'll just kind of fill those little faces in. Just like that. So a lot of the time it's not really that big of a deal. So anyway, I'll come in here and I'll clean the rest of this up. But in the meantime, so in addition to going in there and fixing uh, that geometry, which I'm going to do, you can also come in here and you can right click and you can explode everything. Just like this. That'll put everything to uh, its in one of these objects that'll basically come in here and reduce this to uh, just geometry in here you don't have all those extra groups in there anymore but what you can do is you can drag across them just like this because what it did is it came in here and for whatever reason it added lines along this face what you can do is you can double click in there inside one of the groups and you can uh, you can do a right to left drag and then come over here to the soften edges option in um, in your tray and then you can move this little divider until the all of those lines are kind of softened so that you can't see them anymore so you can see how that came in here and that turned all of these into hidden geometry and you may have to do that on both sides so in this case now I'm coming to the other half and I'm gonna explode that and then I'll just come in here select that geometry and then drag the little slider until those lines kind of go away as well. So if you drag that over to like 45 or something like that, that should uh, that should hide all this different stuff in here. So and then once you go in there and you kind of fix your geometry, which I'll do the rest of a little bit later, but what you can do is you can just draw a line across this top face right here. And um, basically what you can do is you can draw a circle based on the midpoint of that line. So in this case, I'm going to draw a 48 sided circle because that's how many segments should be in this top circle but if you draw a circle across the top just like this what you can do is you can use that to kind of finish this object off so in this case like for example I can come in here and I can I can use the offset tool to create a circle along the center I can push pull that up probably go ahead and hide that line I can flip these faces so I can reverse them just like this. Maybe don't make this quite as tall, but I can use I can use the offset tool again to make kind of a basically a hanging cap up here and then hide that geometry. But basically what I can do is I can use this to go ahead and detail out the top of this so this actually looks like a hanging lamp fixture. So anyway, that's where I'm going to wrap up today's video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Did you like this tutorial? Do you think there's an easier way to do this? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider visiting my support me page on my website. Um, that's got everything from extensions you can buy that'll help support the show to uh, links to my Patreon page. So uh, that's a great way to support the show if you like if you like what I'm doing here. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.